Well, well, well. We only went and hit 15,000 subscribers, didn't we, Switch Up family? Who would have thought that nine months ago when we just reached 1,000? Thanks so much to you and our patron saints. It has actually meant that my wife doesn't hate me doing YouTube anymore. Hurrah! Sheltered released a couple of weeks back and it instantly caught my eye. For one, although the idea of Fallout Shelter was nice, you could be quite comfortable within a few days of play. Sheltered is all about survival. So is it worth donning your radiation suit and braving the black rain? Let's find out. You aren't really told how the apocalypse occurred or why, however there are a series of scenario based levels available if you so choose. These have interesting backstory. The best stories in this game though are those you create yourself. In survival mode, which I've spent the majority of my playtime, emergent events take place which shape your experience. My family unit, which was customised by me, included myself, my wife and my two kids, and our cat, Twiglet. Unfortunately, after a particularly terrible period of drought, we had no water or food left. I was desperately sending parties out with what little water we had to try and bring us some respite to no avail. With only mere hours before the family succumbed to starvation, something tragic saved us all. Twigs the cat died. Subsequent meat, traumatizing the family, but saving their lives. Later, a protection extortion racket turned up at our shelter and duly demanded food in return for protection. We made them promises, but couldn't really deliver on them. They would damage our water filtration systems and threaten raids, which we knew would destroy the entire family. While I went out to gather weapons from the police stations, Josh, who's two, trained like a ninja on the punch bag in the basement to raise his strength stats. When the day finally arrived to head out and deal with the menace, I knew that if we failed, two members of the family would be gone forever. This wait doesn't happen in most story-driven games. The fact that it's about yourselves and your own family, if that's what you choose to create, makes it all the better. As they returned to the shelter, Josh was bleeding badly and was only bandaged with mere seconds before he was going to die. Sheltered is filled with these moments, from Betty almost dying from dehydration and having a choice between her and our son having the last bottle of water, only for it to start raining mere seconds before she died, to Josh and Bella eventually changing character totally, becoming hardened thugs of the wasteland, who suffer nobody and take from them everything. Sheltered is a story sandbox if you will. Story scores 18 out of 20. You control the cursor with the left stick and camera with the right. Zooming in allows you finer control over the game. By clicking in the left stick you can automate your family, but this can lead to issues with them drinking either too much water or drinking during a black rainstorm which can cause radiation poisoning. The aim of the experience is to survive for as long as you can in this mode. To do this you can craft items from the things you scavenge throughout the world. Placing these around your shelter, much like The Sims, will allow you to effectively cater for the needs of each family member. As with that title, if these are allowed to get dangerously low, indicated by a red bar, the person will either starve to death, get sick or stressed and may even permanently lose their positive traits to be replaced with negatives. It's an excellent system overall and a refinement of the Sims method with various cause and effect elements, such as when Betty was slowly dying of radiation poisoning, the children became overly stressed and worried. It really feels like you're fighting for survival in this game. As the weather lashes your shelter, certain things will degrade and anything you use will require repairing to maintain. They can be upgraded with parts found as well. You really do need to proactively seek to build items and upgrade the systems you have in place through the scavenging you've undertaken. To loot said items, everything relies on water. From the world map, you plan expeditions by setting a series of waypoints. 
The further you're planning to go, the more water required. An emphasis on making the most efficient route possible is highlighted. Each potential location will initially be a question mark. However, once visited, we'll show you all the possible items you could find there when revisited again. After you've chosen who is going, up to a maximum of two per team, decking them out with bags to increase the amount they carry or weapons you've found to provide them protection is your next step. If you send them empty-handed and they bump into someone, you may miss out on the chance to trade items. Once sent, you will occasionally receive radio updates. These will tell you what they have found or seen and ask for your input. For example, if they've seen a house in the distance, they may ask what they should do. If all is well, you'll be shown the items and then can juggle your inventory to decide what to keep. Helpfully, back at base, you can pin any recipes you're currently working towards so that a small red symbol is shown when you find these parts. This can make it much easier to find what you need and choosing what to keep. The systems work well enough. When you have several expeditions on the go at once, it can get very frustrating because the radio is just going off every five seconds and you must manually select this to answer it from there. The feature is used so often that a shortcut is sorely needed. Sometimes your party will come across other survivors and these can mean trades or fighting for your life. If you find people in need, they may give you a quest line to follow. It's all very compelling from a gameplay standpoint and I soon lost two entire days worth of play. As if I was 10 years old again playing Dark Ages of Camelot in the night. I remember it well. Combat in-game is a turn-based affair with options to attack, defend, run away or subdue your enemy. The problem I have with combat is how little information you're given. I found that Josh was, for some reason unbeknownst to me, able to subdue almost anyone with a single pistol whip or whack with his axe. This would end the combat without a death and meant you could loot the inventory of your assailant. I mentioned earlier about the stories created and the ability of Josh to essentially wreck anyone in the wasteland changed the way I played with him. He became more aggressive and soon was feared throughout the wastes, giving quarter to nobody. Winning a combat situation grants the characters XP and they level based on the skills used. A successful trade will level the skills linked to trading and combat your strength, for example. It's a depth you don't often experience in these types of games. As you upgrade your shelter, you can recruit new survivors to join you, but you must also then cater for them for a few days before you can control them directly based on the bond built with your family. I could go on for days, but just know that this game is utterly compelling, if a little repetitive towards the end in survival mode. However, the option to complete the aforementioned scenario-based levels provides a ton of play options and replayability. Gameplay scores 18 out of 20, and the controls are okay, but they just lack some of the much-needed shortcuts when you really start piling hours into the game. They score 15 out of 20. Visually, the game has a pixel art 2D aesthetic with some parallax scrolling elements in the background. It's functional and quite charming, but nothing exceptional. I enjoyed the character customization, which really adds to a game of this nature, and choosing positive traits and visual appearances to match your own family was nice. You can customize the paintwork on the walls of your shelter and gradually expand it and change the old crappy items for better and more aesthetic as well as functional ones. There are an array of animals you may encounter in the wilderness as well. In comparison to a beautiful game like This War Is Mine, I did miss not being able to physically explore a location or even see an image of its interior. You do sometimes experience the exterior, but this doesn't feel quite as immersive. Add in some issues with on-screen menus blocking your view on the left-hand edge of the screen, which is where people enter your base, requiring you to zoom in and just try and move the camera to find out what's going on, it gets a little irritating. Audio, though, is decent, with subtle changes to denote action or suspense and the glorious sound of the rain on the surface when you are all on the verge of dehydration is music to your ears. There is a lack of music in the bunker, which is fine by me. You spend so many hours there that a repetitive loop would have been horrible, but you can eventually build a jukebox to play the music you found in the wasteland. I've not yet afforded it though, which is quite annoying after 20 hours. 
<sighs> Visuals and audio score 13 out of 20. The game is priced at £9.99, €14.99 or $14.99. Price wise I think they've absolutely nailed it here. For the length of the game which could essentially be limitless and the scenarios available there is much more than enough here to warrant a purchase. You never feel like you're playing a free game like with Fallout Shelter and customising your own family and living out their adventure is hugely compelling. At times it can feel a little repetitive, particularly when you revisit areas you have done so before, but after a good rainstorm you can start to look further afield and the constant RPG-esque progression of your family takes you from the lowly, frail survivors to a hardened band of stone-cold survivalists. There are potentially hundreds of hours of compulsive content here, plus it comes with both the DLC packs released thus far. It is an absolute win for value. Value scores 18 out of 20. A testament to the experience of Sheltered is to say that I've played it more than any game I've reviewed in a very long time. Well beyond what was required to write this review, I was absolutely unashamedly hooked. It's not perfect and I mentioned there are some little quirks which would easily have been patched like a radio quick button, but it is an excellent shelter building survival game. It scores 82%. For a fan of this genre, particularly if you are less than impressed with Fallout Shelter, this is the one you've been waiting for. But with plenty to sink your teeth into long term and a much lower starting price, definitely worth you checking out. A congratulations to Filthy Banana, you have won our free game this month which is a copy of Mana Spark. Make sure that you guys leave your notifications on because we're going to be dropping two more copies of this game over the next few days just to say Happy New Year. A big thank you for all the support on the channel this year guys, for all things Switch all the time, keep it Switch up. See ya!